Here in the U.S., law enforcement is tracking a cleric who they say is influencing ISIS followers from his home in Michigan. Homeland Security correspondent Jeff Pegues looked into how social media is inspiring jihad. Because it's, it's very easy to go on YouTube. Ahmad Musa Jabril is a Palestinian-American cleric whose extreme views caught the attention of U.S. law enforcement. His alleged call for jihad in 2005 led federal prosecutors to describe him as a man who encouraged his students to spread Islam by the sword, to wage a holy war, and to hate and kill non-Muslims. In 2012, he was released from federal prison after serving six years for insurance fraud. He is currently living in Dearborn, Michigan, where he's on probation. Even under law enforcement supervision, he's become one of the most influential figures for Western foreign fighters, according to British researcher Peter Newman. We counted all their likes, their mentions, their follows, and what turned out to be true is that Ahmed Jibril was liked by an astonishing percentage of the foreign fighters. According to Newman's research, 60 percent of Western foreign fighters were following him on Facebook, favoriting his tweets and retweeting his messages. Last year, a federal judge heavily restricted Jabril's ability to use social media. As a result, his accounts have gone dormant. And yet his Facebook page has grown from 211,000 likes last year to 245,000 today. There were hundreds, and I'm going to say hundreds, maybe even over a thousand of messages I got through social media. Jabril declined our request for an interview. His probation ends in one month. Without new charges, he is free to go back online without restrictions. He's toned down his rhetoric. Should fast from the day, this day on. Suggesting maybe he's a changed man. Some aren't convinced. There's nothing to suggest that he has changed his views. He has toned them down because he realizes that if he doesn't tone them down, they will come after him. And this is the dilemma that law enforcement deals with every day in this country. How best to identify potential threats who may mask their true intent. But, Scott, social media can also help law enforcement. It can give important clues about who and where extremists might be. Jeff, what are some of the things the FBI does to monitor these people that they don't have any reason to arrest? Well, Scott, in the early stages, it could be as simple as monitoring social media. Then it's something that could escalate to monitoring emails, texts, and phone conversations. All of that under court orders. The FBI looks at hundreds of people who may have terrorist leanings and opens investigations into some of those cases. Now, the FBI director just yesterday confirmed that the Bureau has now opened investigations in all 50 states. But after Edward Snowden, there's been a lot of concern about government surveillance. I wonder what intelligence officials are saying for themselves. Well, Scott, law enforcement has been very, very public about the damage they believe Edward Snowden caused to intelligence gathering in this country. The director of national intelligence, James Clapper, has said that Snowden caused significant damage, a significant blow to national security by exposing and compromising intelligence gathering tactics. Jeff Pegues in the Washington newsroom tonight. Jeff, thanks very much.